he's telling us that, uh, in a way, to be isolationists. But he's telling us to, uh, to have only, you know, when we're talking about personal relationships, uh, people that you know are, are, well, they're liberals. And you're not to really have a personal relationship with liberals. Does that mean you're not to have anything to do with non-believers? No. In certain situations, when if you have a, a husband and a wife that might be married, one may be a believer and the other is not. Well, you know, the Apostle Paul tells you to stay with them, and, and by example, maybe you'll lead them to the Lord. But when it comes to doing business, uh, we need to do business with other Christians if we can. Every opportunity that we have, this is one of the things that I was thinking of in the, in the, the starting, getting a listing of Chris, Christian businesses and just advertising on the radio. Uh, folks, uh, if you're looking for this, and I'm doing that right now with a construction company, with one of the, the fellows, <coughs> Travis, that owns a construction company out the Cortland Church. But encourage people just to do business with other Christians. Uh, and another area is to try to uh, avoid uh, in-depth personal relationships with non-believers because they can get you into big trouble. Right. Amen. He goes on to say, Wherefore, come out from amongst them, and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now the unclean things are the things of this world out there. Uh, so much of, of what the world has to offer us, God's Word in the Bible calls unclean. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promise, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Again, over and over and over, what he's talking about is referring to what we call liberalism today, as unclean. And we have a, one of the signs that we use out at the abortion mill, and that is there's no, not one thing here that the Word of God does not call unclean. Okay? The unclean thing. And uh, if you turn over to 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Then this this then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Now if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sins. You notice how over and over and over it all comes down to being cleansed, to being clean. Again, uh, what is holy is clean. Uh, when God gave us the institution of the marriage and the family, that was an honorable thing and a clean thing. What the world has done is taken that, as the Lord says, they have taken my clean things. And being with Judge uh, Grindel yesterday, we were talking about that. And that's what the, these courts are doing. They're taking what God has said, as it says in Ezekiel chapter 22, they have taken my clean and holy things and made them unclean and unholy. And that's what our judicial system is doing today. And he goes on to say, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive our, ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. Well, the folks... Uh, what people say, well, I don't understand that. I don't understand because in one place here it says that you, we, if we say that we haven't sinned, that we're liars. I remember uh, there was a fellow that used to be on the radio program, and I'm having one of my senior moments, but he had a national program, spoke with an English accent, and he and I, uh, he had a national uh, syndicated program, and we had a, a big disagreement live on the air because he claims that he, he claims that he never sins at all. Okay. And, uh, and, and, you know, of course, he, he had a very low opinion of women, too. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us that God has made man the head over the woman, and that's absolutely true. Um, so, when you, uh, when it comes to 
the natural order that God gave us, Christ the head of the church, man the head of the woman, uh, the parents the head of the children, but he turned that around and uh, made it less that in their humanity, in their humanity that women and children were not equal uh, with men. The Bible doesn't teach that at all. Okay? Only in the order that God gave us. Okay? I mean, that's things that the Muslims teach. Okay? But that's not what the Word of God teaches. And turn over to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, starting with verse 40, we read this. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him. <coughs> Excuse me. And kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he was moved with compassion and put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he was clean, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly ch charged him forthwith and sent him away, and said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and to offer the cleansing from those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto him. And he went out and began to publish and much, and to place the matter that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in the desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. Well, two things. Let me go back to what I had just mentioned earlier about the fellow that said he never could sin. Uh, he was basing what he was saying on the fact that since he was forgiven his sins, and that God had forgiven his sins, past, present, and future, and since his sins were already forgiven before he even committed his sins, therefore uh, he doesn't sin. Well, it's true. The Bible says that God has, uh, has you know, takes away our sins past, present, and future. But it does not say at all that we don't sin. Our sins are, have been forgiven. Okay? So uh, he was severely taking that uh, text out of context. And going back to here, now here's this leper, and this leper came to him, and you see, disease is an unclean thing. It's, it's uncleanliness. Sin is an unclean thing. And this is why, you know, today with, with political correctness, they don't call sin sin. They call it political correctness out there today. Uh, they call it... Uh, different lifestyles, progressive lifestyles. God's Word, the Bible calls it sin, and I guarantee you, at the end of the day, God's going to win those arguments, folks. And the Bible says that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. It, it began 2,000 years ago, and it's been taking place ever since. And one of these days, and it, it, it's, it's nearer, I can tell you this, I don't know when the Lord's coming back, but I can tell you one thing. We are closer to his return than we've ever been. That's an absolute <coughs> okay. And he will be back. And everything he said he will do, he will do. That will happen. Amen. There's no chance at all that that won't happen. And so here now, this man comes. And, you know, earlier there were ten men that came for a healing. And only one of them returned to, to say thank you. That God healed. And here the Lord spoken this man's leprosy away. Now folks, the one one of the best things about heaven, about going to glory, is the fact there will be no leprosy. There will be no sickness. That will happen. God who created us uh, will do exactly what he said he will do. He is going to, you know, uh, if you think Donald Trump's going to make things good for us, <laughs> Okay, you wait till you see what God says He can do for us, okay? What God says He can do for us, uh, He can do, okay? And uh, just think about that. We literally will become immortal. We re really will become immortal. Meaning, meaning no death, no sickness, uh, no IRS. Thank God. Okay. No taxes. You won't have to deal... 
with the, the uh, <laughs> Gestapo out there. <laughs> no government to deal with it out there, folks. We won't have to deal with any of that insanity out there today. And just think about that. And so, boy, if the, the liberals only knew what they're going to miss. Right? And even more so if they only knew what they're going to get. Now, turn over to Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, we start in verse 9. So on the morrow, as they went their way, their journey, and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up among the housetops to pray about the sixth hour. That was about noon of the next day. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And I saw heaven open and a, a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheep, knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, where in all the manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and the wild beasts, and the creepy things, and the fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill an ape. Peter said, No, not so, Lord, for I have never <coughs> eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice said unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou come. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what the vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had been inquire of Simon's house, who stood before the gate. And he called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold thee, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go unto them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you see. And what is the cause therefore you come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion is a just man, and one from that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear the words of thee. Now, old Peter, uh, he had a tendency to be, in certain ways, contentious. He was, like a lot of us, a little bit of hard-headed. And... And, uh, you know, he, he was impetuous. He would act and speak often before he thought it out. He did that several times in Scripture, and the, and the Lord had to, to chastise him several times. Well, what happened here, uh, the cleansing work of Christ on the cross, you know, that not only applied, that not only applied to the sins, but also the cleansing work on the cross uh, Remove the dietary barriers between the Jews and the Gentiles. I mean, that was a major uh, dispute they had about what you were eating. Today, we have legalists out there uh, do the very same thing. Uh, they're still hooked on that. We are not under the letter of the law. And yet, you have people out there, I mean, I hear from them all the time, don't eat that, don't touch that, don't eat that, uh, you know, don't eat that. You have the port police. Uh, you have people uh, that, are, that are watching to see if you eat any shell foods like clams or oysters. Uh, and and they're, they're out there. Now, uh, there is, you know, in, um, it's not definitely not good to eat a, a, lot of, a lot of pork or a lot of red meat. But at the same time, uh, you know, and, and I, if, if I can, I'll buy it out here, this raised... Uh, that these animals are raised where they don't have all of the drugs and everything that's pumped into them. And more and more people were doing that, and I've seen more and more a lot of the stores, they're even some of the fast foods are now advertising uh, that they're, they're meat and that it comes from uh, free-range chickens and that their eggs come from free-range and they're, they're advertising that. But, but folks, what God has said, we are not under the dietary law. And uh, again, there are, are people that always try to, to put us under some kind of bondage. And that's what the Judaizers did today. And we have that, we have some of those actually 
Well, the Sabbatarians are the same way. Uh, you, you'll often find the Sabbatarians also hold to a lot of the dietary laws. And this is pretty, pretty clear to me what he told Peter. Right? He told Peter, don't worry about that. What did Jesus say? He said, it's not what goes in the mouth that defiles the man, that makes him unclean, but what comes out of his mouth. Right? Yeah. And that's what he's telling you here. What God hath cleansed, thou call not common. Okay. Well, now, we, we just took a look at the clean. And now we're going to look at the obscene. With the today's uh, sharp decline of morality, for the heathen, the once obscene today is now called the norm. A good example is the spread <coughs> of universities that are now allowing and promoting sex week. More and more of them are having sex week. And this is the practice of giving students credits for fornicating in front of a live audience. Now the only resistance that I've heard about this is recently they allowed, you know, young kids, elementary school kids to come in and watch, one of them did. And the parents were offended by that. But this is kind of what we're talking about here. And this is what's taking place in more and more of your colleges nowadays, folks. Uh, this is uh, obscene. This is, I mean, we're there. This is the great apostasy. Right now, we're living there now. Right there. We're here in it. You understand? Uh, at no time in history has, uh, has the morality of this nation been reduced to such a level as it is. <coughs> Now, I want to turn over it because we took a look at the clean, we took a look at the obscene, and now we go to Horus Galore, and we turn over to Pro chapter 7, um, or I mean Proverbs 23, I'm sorry, Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, just verses, two verses, well, three verses, 26 to 28. My son, give thine heart. Give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey, and increases the transgressions among men. Well, and, and whores today, a lot of your older whores really go after, uh, they call them cougars. They call them cougars, and they really go after a lot of your younger fellows. Uh, kind of folks that, <laughs> that, that uh, would vote for Bernie Sanders, the ones that really don't think things out very well. And, uh, yes. you know, they call themselves cougars. Uh, I call them old whores. Yeah. And so I want to go over to Ezekiel chapter 16. In Ezekiel chapter 16, starting with verse 34, we read this. And the country in thee from other women, and the contrary is in thee from other women, thy whoredoms, whereas none followeth thee to commit whoredoms. And in that thou givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee, therefore thou art contrary. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of thy Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered, through the whoredoms with thy lovers, and with all the idols of thy abominations, and by the blood of thy children, which thou did give unto them. Behold, therefore I will gather all thy lovers, whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all, all them that thou hast loved, and all them that thou hast hated, and I will even gather them around about against thee, and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. And I will judge thee as a woman that is, is a great wedlock, and shed blood, or judge. And I will give the blood in a fury and jealousy. And I will also give thee into their hands, and they shall throw down thine eminent place, and shall break down the high places, and shall strip thee also of the clothes, and shall take thy fair jewels, and, they, and leave thee naked and bare. They shall also bring up a company against thee and shall stone thee with stones, and thrust through with their swords. 
And they shall burn thine houses with fire, and execute judgment upon thee in the sight of many women. And I will cast thee to cease from playing the harlot, and thou shalt also give no hire anymore. Now that's got two applications. In that application, he's describing the way he's going to deal with uh, the nation here, Israel, the way he's going to deal with them. And he's doing it, and he's describing two things. <coughs> The, the women in Israel in their sin, but also when they've gone a whore, and these other women that he's referring to are not just other women, they're other peoples, other nations. And so he's he's talking about going a whoring, and he's doing that because they've they've gone after other gods. Right. And they're worshiping their pagan gods. Mm -hmm. And if you go over to and I want to finish here with Revelation chapter 17. And here we see the ultimate, what's coming, which is heading our way, the ultimate great horror. And this is, this is on a worldwide scale. And this great horror, she comes after the church. We're number one on her, her attack list. It's us, the church. But it's the one world religion. It starts out with the one world religion. But the great whore also has gone a whoring with the One World Congress and the One World Political Scene. And the Congress and the political scene turn against the whore and they burn her with fire. But it's the One World Religion and uh, everyone refers to it as, as the Catholic Church. Well, the Catholic Church is going to have a major part in this for sure, but it's not just the Catholic Church. Uh, what it is is already taking place right now. You can go to the United Nations building in New York City and you'll find them right there. It's the World Council of Religions. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither! I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon so many waters. Now the waters means nations. That means Gentile nations. I'm going to close right here and then finish We've been coming to you this morning from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road, Newberry, Ohio. You've been listening to us this morning on the Eagle, uh, 104.3 FM. That's the Liberty Works Radio Network. You can hear us from again at 2 a.m., 8 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Until next week, we want to say good morning, God bless, and remember always, always, keep fighting the fight. So he carried me in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman set upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery of Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Folks, the greatest persecution of the church has always come from the false and the apostate religions. It's always been that way. Yep. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore, didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her with the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Well, uh, that means he was alive at this point right now. He's not alive, but he will be revived. And go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that he was and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman set it. Now, there are, seven, there are two major cities that are built upon seven hills. One is Rome and the other is Jerusalem. And here is the mind which hath wisdom, the seven heads are seven mountains of which the woman said it. 
And there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue his short space. And when the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. The ten horns which was, which thou sawest, are ten kings, which has received no kingdom as yet. But receive power as kings one hour with the beast. They have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill this will, and to agree, and to give them the kingdom of the beast, until the words of God shall fulfill, be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is a great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Well, see, we're seeing this boredom taking place today. Everywhere we turn here in America, the NFL, I won't watch any more football games now because they have come out and they're trying to shove sodomy upon us, okay? Uh, PayPal, we're looking for another company other than PayPal to use to promote because PayPal has said because of what they signed that bill to protect the liberty and freedoms of Christian in North Carolina, PayPal said they were going to pull out of North Carolina because of that. All of these large corporations that are being virtually blackmailed and intimidated and bullied by the sodomite community, and they have the backing of the United Nations, the United Nations with them. Now this is a time, folks, for us. We're going to stand our ground, either going to stand fast, okay, or wish you had. Like Paul said, if I'm the only one, if I'm, I'm still not backing up. This is, there's no time for us to stand down. He tells you very, very clearly that God wants no part with those that get conformed. And that's what that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to force conformity on us. So you say, well, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to go to jail. Listen, you're much better off going to jail. You're much no. better off uh, being martyred, okay? No. In fact, you, you should find it counter all glory if you're willing. But this is the time. And, and I'm going to tell you, the pressure is going to be more and more. You're going to have friends and family are going to tell you, look, chill out, come on, man. You That's know, right. you really, you, you kind of, you and this Christian thing, you, you become an embarrassment to all of us. You know, we just want to have some fun. Yep. We have families, okay. Yeah, you know, gee, I mean, look, that's your nephew or that's your niece that's that's having the sodomite wedding. You know, can't you just uh, compromise a little bit? No. That's what, see, that's what the world's going to tell you to do. They're going to tell you that. Your children, your grandchildren. And what do you tell them? Say, no, I have higher standards than that. I have higher value. I'm better than that. I'm not going to wallow in the sewage in the mind. Yeah. Because God's Word, the Bible, calls it uncleanness. If you take a stand, and you hold your ground, you keep your integrity, like Job did. Well, I'm going to tell you, Job was tested severely of the devil. He was severely tested. But God said of Job, he kept his integrity. Will he be saying that of us? Time's going to tell because we're going to be tested. It's coming. Yep. Get ready for it. Yep. And that's the end of that message. Okay. I've shared it. MoveOn.org is going to be really happy with the title of my message. Keep happy with the message. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
stand strong, Lord, and uh, no matter what, no matter if we uh, have our families or friends just uh, abandoned us, all we got to do to stand up for you, Lord, in all our situations, Lord, so all we, so um, uh, we pray, Lord, um, since we, uh, since we are, are giving to you, Lord, uh, you bless it, Lord, and, and also, Lord, to uh, uh, to further your kingdom, Lord, to get this, uh, the soul saved, Lord. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. While they're taking up an offer, uh, think of what praises you have for the Lord today. Right. Yes, that's Sandy. I'm so thankful Martha came to the operation. I was that they found that hole in her heart. And I was telling Fred that I was thankful for gift placement from people that have gone into that ungodly NEOCA or SA Milwaukee. And if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't know what was going on there and you know, what they're trying to do. And so I just wanted to say that. Okay, we'll go. There's all kinds of, right now, there's all kinds of uh, things taking place with the Western Reserve with that uh, funneling money. They're ripping the taxpayers off left and right. It's unbelievable. 
what they're doing. And Judge Grindel is going to be speaking on that, so we need to be thankful for that. Huh? So, what other uh, what other words of praise do we have? Yes. Thank the good Lord for you and all the ministers that are that are teaching us. I you know I can't stop thanking the good Lord for you all. Well, thank, thank you very you. much for that. We will thank certainly you. appreciate that. Please continue. You know it's Holy Spirit, it's not us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, John. Uh, I'd just like to thank the Lord when I went to see Grandma Marge yesterday. She looked better. I mean, she's still old and kind of tired, but she improved quite a bit <laughs> from when I. I don't think she'll get much younger. <laughs> that would definitely be a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Those are so good. What other words of praise do we have? How about the beautiful weather? Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, he's downstairs because um, his knee is giving a problem, but uh, praise God, Brian Park is cancer free. Yeah. Yes. Brian Grace. got a very good report in cancer free, so uh, we were concerned, very concerned about that. Words of praise for me from the one doctor told me because of the condition of my bladder that there was a possibility of a cancer. And so they took a specimen. I won't say what the specimen was of, but you can imagine. He, said, he called, called me yesterday and said, everything's clear, not a problem at all. Praise, Praise God Lord. for that. It's always a good thing when you find out that you're cancer-free. Yes. Right? Yep. Cancer's not a friend, is it? Nope. No. What other words of praise do we have? Yeah, cancer. I thank God for this day and every day, and I'm not cancer-free yet, but I've got one... Uh, oncologist that's willing to talk to me more about herbs and there's another one that uh, is supposed to be more of a specialist with this type of cancer I have I got really depressed on the one oncologist who's telling me it's a very rare cancer and almost impossible to get rid of but uh, I haven't given up yet and I'm constantly uh, praying for God's guidance and I want to thank God for our pastors too they're all good men of God Thank you. Keep, keep using the keep small using the but mighty. Rockside, just pour it on there. You know, you oxygen know, kills cancer. I, I was I was absolutely amazed that I heard on uh, on the news they had the, the largest cancer treatment uh, facility in the country that they will no longer going to use chemotherapy. They said they finally come to this conclusion that it does more damage than it does good. That so now that they're going all to all natural remedies, and that's the I think it's the cancer treatment centers. Oh, right. cancer treatment. Oh, okay. I think it's yeah, Sloan Kettering. I'll keep going. With it. They announced no longer will they use any kind of chemotherapy. Great. I got a CD series that anybody wants to watch on uh, cures, natural cures for cancer. No one. Nine, nine uh, programs, about an hour and a half a piece. Uh, all you know, co co covers covers almost everything. So we have a lot to be thankful for, and I think we, we need to be thankful for uh, the fact that you know uh, we're still here. We're not in jail. We're not in prison yet. Okay? And uh, I was I was just down in, uh, like I said, down in the prison yesterday. Uh, there are a lot of those guys that should have been out of prison for a long, long time ago. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just it's unbelievable the uh, injustice that we have in our country. But don't forget, we're less than 5% of the world's population, and we are 26% of the world's prison population. America is the world's greatest prison state, the number one prison state in the world right now. Yes, we have more lawyers here than any other Yeah, 65%. Yeah, right. because, because we have so many lawyers in this world. Not lawyers. Yeah. Did you see or cover that bit about China tearing down thousands of crosses from churches? Oh yeah, China's been going on a rampage tearing crosses off of churches. But see, what's happening in China, listen, they claim that there are actually more Christians in China than there are people in America. Yeah. Uh, because, see, over here, uh, the real church, the unregistered church, the actual unregistered church, we're a minority. Over there, the state church is the minority. The unregistered New Testament church that won't register with the state, they're the largest church in China. And they're growing. They're growing by leaps and bounds. And also, 
the end time revival. Yeah, and you're seeing also a number of, a, a lot of Muslims that are, are being led to the Lord. So that is a very good, and we praise the good Lord for that. So yeah, you're seeing a lot of things if you watch, if you have eyes to see, and ears to hear, and pay attention to what's happening. All the, the signs of the sin return of the Lord are out there. So we got to be looking up for our redemption throughout night. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who else is going to... Yeah. We need to pray for London and uh, New York where they're talking about the... Uh, to, uh, the re re reproduction of uh, the Temple of Baal. Oh, they, they canceled those coupons. What happened was, well, now here's what happened. They, they wanted to know how the Christians found out about all of this. How did they, you, know, you know, it's like, see, we're not supposed to, you know, we're supposed to wait for NBC, ABC, CBS to tell us what to think. See? And here they wanted to know how the Christians, because they even, even a lot of the pagans, okay, uh, were against that having uh, the in fact the uh, the altars of Baal means the the sacrifice of Moloch, okay, the altar where they burn children alive, okay? and they wanted to put replicas not just not just in, in, in France and, and America, not New York and Paris, but they wanted or London, but they wanted to put it in Worldwide. also in Germany. They wanted to. Um, in fact, they've already got one in Germany now. Does that mean that our leadership will still have to go to San Francisco and over there to worship their Baal? Uh, uh, yeah. Because, you know, the uh, Bohemian Grove? Hopefully, that's just like to be bailed out, okay? Yeah. Hopefully, Hillary will. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they, won't, they won't have New York. Okay, to to Hopefully, Hillary will need some bail. Yeah. A different yeah. kind of bail. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't erected one in the, in the United Nations building yet. Yeah. Maybe they will. Right. Anyhow, yeah, uh, folks, yeah. that is another. Those those towers was, are were supposed to be portholes to welcome and usher in the Antichrist. <laughs> so all of these things are happening. So this is our time. God has raised us up. We are in the most exciting time in the history of the world right now. So we got to meet the challenge. We got to run to the battle. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're we're showing a film. Uh, out there at the Cortland Church in our Thursday night classes, and it is really powerful film. Uh, it, it really awakens. You should be seeing this film too, because it was put out by World, and it shows you how the opposition, how they've started some of these things. Where you know how many, how long have you been where you've heard that? And and she called in. It was on the radio program when it came to the assassination of, of JFK at Mrs. Brown, who claimed to be the uh, mistress of, of Lyndon Johnson, who had a child out of wedlock by him, and she was saying how she was there the day before the assassination and sitting outside the, uh, the big library where they were all in there. And, and as uh, JFK, or not JFK, as Lyndon Johnson and uh, Daddy Bush and the others came out, they, they opened the door, and she was behind the door that they didn't see her. And that um, she said that Lyndon Johnson stopped and lit a cigar and he said, after tomorrow, those Kennedy blankety blanks will never give me any more trouble. Now that's what she said right there on the radio. But now in this film it shows you, what's the name of that again? Disinformation. Disinformation. It goes back and it shows you the actual documents and the meetings uh, where Khrushchev and this, the Russian, the KGB, how they planned all of this, how they said this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to bring it down, this is the disinformation we're going to bring in, okay? And so, and and everything that they were, the, the documents that they were able to say this is, they've done. So, you have so many conspiracy theories that were originated right there by the KGB, planted here, and the media will take it up and run, and they will leak things out, too. And you know what, you know who told me that? But he was totally outnumbered by everybody, was Colonel Speed Wilson. He was on the commission there um, that investigated that, okay, Colonel, and he told me exactly what that film said. Now, he knew about it, okay, but he says, there's no way we can get the real truth out in our media today. It's got to come out by way, so we're going to be showing it. The, it was the first time I've ever showed a DVD when we looked at that. Um, where 
the people that were there that just saw one hour for the first time, uh, I said, well, listen, half the class didn't make it this week. Uh, how many of you would, would care to watch this over again? And they all, every person raised their hand and said, well, I'll, I'll watch the, the same hour over again. And then we're going to have the second hour later. So it was really amazing. You ought to see this one, Steve. You'd like this one more. I probably have. Uh, uh, it's available on the Internet. Uh, Almost everything is nowadays. You can this see is it. information. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyhow, we're going to be showing it Thursday. Now, Lord's willing, if things work out the way we're planning, because I have a, another pastor out there, Hal, who is, is uh, part of our church out there in Portland. Uh, I've been having him to start to teach our classes, and he's doing a really good job. So, come September, on Thursdays, I'm planning on teaching here on Thursdays instead of out there on Thursdays. And also at the Cortland Church now, uh, we're making full use of, of our, our building. Uh, Joe starts in, in the morning, Pastor Joe and his family, the Baptist, and we're calling it the uh, Family Baptist Doers of the Word. Okay, So Joe starts out there in the morning with his church, and then uh, after him, uh, Mike comes in and he has a ministry to those